Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Disco Elysium. It's very loud right now. Um, I hope you can all hear me just fine. Um, we got Ryan in the chat saying hi YouTube, Eonix saying hi YouTube, Buttspot saying hi but YouTube. Um, <laughs> down in the chat down here I'm going to be chatting with everybody throughout the stream so you'll hear me talking with them. Um, but now, if you've been following along with the other episodes on YouTube, you will know that we are about to get to speak to the Union boss and see what's all up with that. See, Eonix says, I also streamed for the first time in three years yesterday. Nice! That's awesome. That's a lot of fun, Eonix. I wish you the best of luck as you start going with that. You know, you could stream, um, you know, how you put together an animation. People would love that. Ray says, I was an innocent wee girl, therefore the girls in my class made fun of me. Uh, one of them made a rumor that she accidentally touched my crotch and felt nothing, so my penis is tiny or something. I was just confused as to why the size of Pihos is any of her concern. That's true. AMAB is one I'm not, um, uh, familiar with. Assigned male at birth. Aha! Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Assigned male at birth. I see. Hey. Fair thing to let y'all know, everybody on YouTube as well. Anybody who's here in my stream is always welcome. If anybody ever gets discriminated against in my stream, they are immediately banned permanently. I don't care if they sub or anything like that. Um, I want everybody to feel all inclusive here. I want it to be a nice, happy place. So you should be able to speak openly about whatever you want. Just don't, you know, tear anybody down, insult anybody, that kind of stuff, that sort of thing. So either way. We're happy to have all kinds of people here. That's just on a side note. Let's get into Disco Elysium, okay? Which, this game is a little bit rough sometimes. It doesn't play by the normal conventional rules of anything. So. That's so rude, those girls in your class, though, that made fun of you like that. that that's really rude. Transgender, but, ah, just, that's right. Safe space. <laughs> butt spot. Safe space. Transgender butt. <laughs> Ooh. Wait a minute. Okay. Um, so, the big boss. Let's talk to him. Before you is a walrus of a man. A walrus of a man. a large desk. He looks up from his work. Not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair. Yet, says What's up, bro boy? He simply stares at you. <laughs> you in charge of the dock workers? Let's get straight to business. There's a dead body in a tree. Hey, how's my face? My face is good, King Sturgeon. I don't. That's the second time somebody said something about my face. <laughs> Buttspot, why do you exist? You don't have anything in this conversation. Buttspot wants to talk too. <laughs> uh, my face is great, King Sturgeon. How's your face doing? Rustic Friar, when I was in middle school, the girls used to grab my cheeks unprompted and squeeze them, which was weird, but I was a rolling ball of positivity at that age, so I didn't think much of it. I feel that. That happened to me, not the cheek thing, but other things did too. Oh, never mind. What? What? Is that, is that a quote that I don't get? King Sturgeon? It might be. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Let's get straight to business. There's a dead body in a tree. Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. Dubois. It's good of you two to stop by. Dubois. Please. He gestures to a tiny chair opposite to his giant desk. I'm Everard, wow. Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. The man relaxes into his chair and continues. What a voice they chose for this big dude. Oh my gosh. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? Mine's not a, not as boiling as yours because it's so hot. Ooh. Hmm. Dig it. He looks extremely comfortable. <laughs> Everyone drop Brian. Chair, That's right. On the other hand, looks like a torture <laughs> device. It's portrait, it's portrait is like living wax. Melting wax? What are you talking about, Rusty? Yeah, King Sturgeon's got us right. Got it right. Everybody drop your primes for me. It's an easy thing if you already got Amazon Prime. Just help me out a little bit. It gets me that closer to Elden Ring down here, you see? You see this? We're 11 away from Elden Ring. That'd be a great time, too. Spanky! What's up, Spanky? We haven't seen you in a while. Everybody spank Monkey Tater Nuts in the chat. 
Found some Doritos crumbs in my belly. Oh my gosh. What? Why are there... We have a lot to unpack here with this question. Hold on. Ionic. One. Why are there Dorito crumbs in your belly button? Two. Why did you smell them? And three. Were you surprised? <laughs> Snakey found their way back. That's good. All right. You go ahead, detective. Lieutenant nods at you, then the chair. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. All right, let's split the call. That's right, yes, good. What did it taste like? There you go, Spanky. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Why are you calling me Mr. Dubois? Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. It's nothing. Yes, that's probably right. It's nothing. Forget about it. No. Filter it out. Don't filter it out. I don't sit. It's kind of my thing. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong conviction. <laughs> <laughs> Not even gonna repeat what Ionic said, but um, there was no tasting involved. As he nods, his multiple chins move like ocean waves. I Ugh. too have convictions. One of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. You jerk. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. He turns back to his typewriter. You're no Titan of Felician, buddy. He's got you in a fork. Sit down or leave. I will right, we'll take a seat. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man. Well, now we are sitting. And reasonable men, reasonable men can be of great use to one another. He gives you a sly wink. Remain serious. Damn, this chair is uncomfortable. So tell me, how can the head <laughs> of the Dubardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair you're sitting on oh, has got wow. to be the most comfortable chair in the world it's violating your backside why did that why did how did my pain threshold fail that uh, by the way i heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain lawrence gart some people have no manners it pains me to say this should take care of that nonsense gart is fine he points to a giant novelty check on his desk it's absolutely comically huge wow it should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. He points at it again. He's trying to bribe us. Um, by the way, Spanky, how are you today? Everybody else, if I haven't asked you already, how are you all doing today? I hope you're all having an excellent time. Wow, that's 25 real. That's 25? Good. You need it. Uh huh. You can take that. Let's see. Wait, you know Gart? Thank you, Evrot. Take the comically large check, but don't say anything. Keep it. I'm good. You can take that comically large check and shove it up your ass. Wait, you know Gart? Yes, I know Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. With a grin, he points to the check again. It's like you're on a game show. At least don't thank him for it. <laughs> Ionic, that sounds like an excellent episode. I'm pretty sure I saw that one too. Um, let's see. I'm gonna do that. Uh, you can take that comp. No. Keep it, I'm good. We'll, we'll be polite, I guess. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts then. No, it's gotta be like twice that. No, four times that amount, really? He crosses his arms on his ample midsection and sinks further into his chair. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, union people are on it as we speak. Mm. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. Uh-huh. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost, lost gun. gun. Lost, lost gun. gun. Lost, lost gun. gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only Kill two that words up. escape gravitational pull lost and gun uh not worried got this are you all right harry 
You say you've got this, but you seem a little anxious to me. Don't be. Everything's going to be all right. Shut up, Evwat. Evwat. It's not like you left it loaded. Hmm. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Okay. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now. Uh huh. Pointing it into their own mouths. Oh, you mean like us? It's in a safe place. How do you know it's I in a safe left. place? I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Let's see, Yonix says, "Do you think I should continue playing Battle for Bikini Bottom on stream tomorrow, or should I play something else? Continue with it um, for a couple days, and then throw in a different game. You know, have two games going. Try and lure in different audiences." But Buttspot says, do you butt I should continue playing Battle for Butt Key Butt Bottom on stream tomorrow or should I butt something else? Ryan says, hmm. It was loaded. There were two bullets in it. You always keep at least two barrels loaded. Um. Uh, oh, that's really low composure. I can't challenge that again. Kim, um, Kim. Officer. We will deal with this later. We don't need Mr. Clare's help with this. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Who can we uh can we can we get an eight percent roll on composure? Rustic, I, I don't I don't Where's our boy our composure's low. Great, uh huh. Um eight percent roll, let's go! God uh. you're sweating. We have to roll. Joking. You're about to cry. We Aren't literally you? had to roll. You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are going to shoot themselves with it. And Friar has got you by the balls. That's true. So what? Men can cry too. You want to cry? God, you're weak. Whatever you do, don't cry. You'll think you're disgusting. Enjoy stream. Let's see. FR just got you by the balls. I enjoy streaming, but setting everything up is so much work. But Streamlabs saves your settings, so it'll be easier tomorrow. That's right. OBS does the same thing. It saves all your settings too. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good, sir. What is this, Mr. Dubois? He keeps repeating. What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill, Chill. Mr. Dubois. Mr. Dubois. Harry. The large man snaps his fingers, but to no effect. You're in some stupor. There are no Harrys. Let your mind go to your safe place. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe. I mean, you're just playing video games, so of course you would be fun. Exactly. The hard part is keeping up with chat, and if you're recording for YouTube, making sure the commentary is colorful enough. Maybe you could use your hands some. In a kind of throw-in motion, like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. Dubois, Dubois, the flip up. <laughs> uh. Let's see. Actually, this chair is uncomfortable. I can use that glass of water. Oh yeah, man, I'm fucking great. I'm melting. What an odd like demonstration that. of... Uh, you got me, Harry. Aha! I don't even know what. Got him. As entertaining as it was... Colorful. I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. You want colorful commentary, King Sturgeon? Imagination. There was supposed to be a rainbow, but there wasn't rainbow. I'm sorry. The VOD for my stream, so you can... Give me some feedback, please. I might be able to. Oh, there you go. You do King Sturgeon there. <laughs> colorful commentary, huh? Well, we could make it more colorful here. Um, let's see. No, it's not. It's not doing it. Change the lights. Change the lights, darn you! There we go. Bop. Play it. Now we get different colors, it'll change. There it goes. See? Colorful. The commentary doesn't even need to be on there. But you know what else is great? Airline food. The funny thing about airline food is actually that it's not terrible tasting. It's just at the altitude. You wind up getting, um, 
a different kind of pressure on your taste buds. So what happens is everything changes. The air molecules are a little less dense and everything, and you don't taste as much as you should at ground level. It's actually really delicious food at ground level, but in the air, it tastes awful. Just make TikTok some shit out Twitch. King Sturgeon, oh, come on. <laughs> Briantine, says Rustic Friar. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Trying to be good at Twitch, but barbarous. Oh, psha! I am merely a pawn in the stage of Twitch. One who hardly knows what the heck he's doing, and I have a kazoo for comfort. <laughs> and it helps me out, okay? The hanged man has Briantine in his hair. Oh, really? Interesting. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. It is about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Okay. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. Uh, you call me Mr. Dubois. Why? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard. I call you Harry. That's what the hanged corpse called you. Harry. So that's really my name? My God, so it's true. <laughs> I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop. Yes. You? What are the yes. odds of that? He shrugs with an amazed expression. I think the odds of that are very low. He looks at you. Uh, my memory's fine. I'm just testing so you. Good to hear that, Harry. Uh huh. Apparently, my sources were wrong. He passed the brown folder However, in front of him. If you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out. No, you didn't. Big fat folder. Big fat folder. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Lieutenant inspects Everett over his spectacles. Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? His eyes Me never leave Harry yours. Talking about his lost identity right now. Oh, shush, Evrat. Asking too many questions will make you look weak. You should maybe focus on the folder. Let's get this straight. What is my phone? Your mom's so fat she caused a McDonald's food shortage. It's Harry. Ha! Harry Dubois. <laughs> Wait, I thought you were Harry Dubois. No, I'm really, really not. You are Harry. Uh, okay, I like it, Picasso. Could work with and that. I can work with you, Harry. He raises now, his index what finger. Else can I do for you? You know anything about my family? Do I have a wife or kids or? Family, Harry. Fuck this, the block. Yeah, Ryan. Exactly. There's not one peep of family in here, unless you think you're a family man. Do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? Uh, you're uh. Never mind. Uh. Never mind the family. Family, Harry, is the most important no, do it. thing in the world. Do it again. Family, Harry, you're not. I think I do. Girl. I'd be a wonderful father. Yes, I'm sure you're going to make one little boy or a girl very happy and proud one day, Harry. Uh huh. What kind of a cop does it say I am? Harry, you're not simply a cop. You're a star. You can watch a U.S. on Netflix soon, so that's nice. Nice, Ionic. Enforcement sky, outshining all other stars. You're a superstar. Uh. <laughs> so I like about you, Everard. You get of me. Of course I do, Harry. And I'm gonna help you shine. I'm gonna put you on all the big stages. Your name in giant neon letters. Harry Dubois. Where did you get that folder? Ah, this. He closes the folder. My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. Oh. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. Everard. I'm sure you understand. Please continue, Harry. Turns back to you. You know what? Ooh, ooh, Kim suspects something. 58%. Let's of talk about other ma Harry, matters for a moment. Let's, let's do this. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Oh, okay. Here, you're one of us now. A real red and white union. Man. Got a union card. Take care, Harry. First and foremost, intellect. Okay. Smoke one. Give me that extra boost. Not that smoking is good, but it gives us a boost in this. Okay, that's that's just what happens. Okay. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time, since you've already sat on that chair. Let's Let's go over a couple it, things Harry. about me. There we go. Seventy-two percent. Roll for drama! Oh, come on! 
but the look on his face says, I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, later, Yannick. <laughs> Got nothing to hide. Oh, Harry. He peeks into the folder. Oh, wow. This is really something. As if it's hard to turn away from the mysteries inside. Buttspot says I have to butt now. All right. I'm sure it's not that bad. Because Lieutenant whispers. Old RCM folder, and I very much doubt you in there. So how about it, Harry? You need assistance, I presume? Of course, Harry, of course. Let's not linger on personal details and amnesia. You wanted something from me. Let's talk about my lost gun. Yes, your lost gun. Space train serious. Men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. He winks at it's you. It's just a matter of time and effort. effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Hold on, could you really hold my gun hostage? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. Wait, the gun may have been bought from Roy's pawn shop. Have you men factored that in? Yes. Thank you for the hot tip regarding your lost gun, Harry. My men have indeed. He makes air quotes. Factored in that you pawned it. <sighs> now please, let the professionals do their job. Kick back, Harry, relax. I have great guys on this. You focus on what's important. Building our relationship for the good of Martin Ains. I will not be blackmailed with this gun business. Harry, Harry. I was only trying to be tactful. A lost gun is a dangerous thing. I can't have it around in my neighborhood. That's a lie, Evros. Kids could be playing gun roulette with it huh. as we speak. Teenage gangs could be arming themselves. Get a hold of yourself, Harry. I assure you, we are working on locating the missing yeah. sidearm as well. Excellent, Mr. Kitsuragi. That's excellent news. He claps his hands Looks together. Looks like we have a friendly gun-finding competition on our hands. Uh, let's see. Looking into your shady brew. I don't know what that means, Harry. Shady brew? There are so many moving parts in my operation, I can't keep track of them all. Evros, come on, You know buddy. what? Don't even tell me. Whatever it is, do it. Surprise me. Just one thing. If you can, make it even shadier. Oh, really? He sincerely has no idea what you were talking about. And he doesn't care either. He does not care at all. Aren't you going to ask me how I got in? Am I going to ask? Hell, Harry. You spin kicked my strongest man in the face. I saw it from my window. Oh, he saw the move. Would you ask a man like that how he got into your container yard? <laughs> you don't have a window. I understand. I am a terrifying... De but you don't have a window. It was a figure of speech, Harry. Of course I don't have a window. I'm in a container. Anyway, I assure you, <laughs> I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. Could you help me get a dead body down from a tree? You might have noticed there's one hanging on the tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my. He smiles pleasantly. Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare, the man was hanged with a cargo belt. A steel reinforced cargo belt. Mm -hmm. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. Also, I studied the work, pr the footprints at the crime scene, worker boots. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. He licks his fat lips and smiles. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. Aha! Uh -huh. Picks up the handset of a radio phone to his right, then clicks a button. John Luke, the cop who bested you in physical combat is here, and he has a little dead body in a tree problem. Namely, he needs it to be taken down. Please extend him this courtesy. You can find Luke down at the gates. Yes. But you already knew that. <laughs> anyway, he's going to help you. Now that he's back on his feet. Oh, we got the big racist guy to help us take the body down. Great! That's great. I'm told the union's involved in the local drug trade. What? Harry, Smacks his forehead. How could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as yeah, any almost. Johnny Fat guy, but I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? 
<laughs> Threads a fine line. Threads a fine line. You're right. Are you actually investigating this? Um. No comment. Harry. He sighs. You wound me, Harry. In the heart. But I trust you to put this to bed. Uh-huh. Do what you must, and let's change the subject, shall we? He's hiding his real reaction beneath courtesy. All right. Thank you for your understanding. The lieutenant looks him in the we eye. continue to do what we must. You too, lieutenant. <laughs> he chuckles suddenly. You know, I like you, but you never were my favorite. I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. Team Harry. No taken. Did we have anything else to do here, Harry? I want to talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martin Ames. He nods. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to help you like I'm helping you with the body and your lost gun. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand... You need to interview me. I sense there's a but. But there's a thing that's been yep. keeping me up at night. Yep. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Uh-huh. Yes, that sounds good. The lieutenant says with a slow do. nod. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. Uh, uh, Kim, is that true? Are we door opening machines? I'm not sure I understand. He looks at the if union you're boss. Asking us to break down someone's door, it's not going to happen. Come now, I just need you to go open a little door for me and leave it unlocked. A simple thing. Absolutely nothing shady about it. If what? Does this jiggling ooze think he's going to use you? He's got another thing coming. Play his game, son. With your eyes peeled. Okay. He's going to slip up. And when he does, you're going to come out on top. Why don't you just open it yourself? Harry, I'm a very busy man. And more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique. Oh, extraordinary physique. Oh, my. You could run around all day. Extraordinary physique. <sighs> You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very uh -huh. busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi. Uh -huh. And therefore, I must occasionally enlist outside help. He turns back to you. So what will it be, Harry? Has 20 Rest been doing work? Yes, they have. They've been really kicking it here. Like, we getting it now. Yeah. Whose door is it? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel, a weasel huh? Nothing for you to worry about. What do you mean by a weasel? A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. He removes his glasses and rubs his nose. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. <laughs> it's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Puts his glasses back on. I bet you don't even know anything about the hanging. Harry, my dear friend. I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martin Ames. Harry Potter, lol. That's right. Uh. Alright, we need to talk about that murder. Fantastic, my friend. I don't want Just to, but we need to. When it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. He flicks his fingers. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the Union. Special operations. A little tired? Maybe a little. Why? Why do you ask? Free thinker too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Smiles obviously satisfied with how well he planned it all out. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. Oh, we're gonna go in. Uh, I met Joyce, the company representative. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. He adjusts a button I on his sleeve. Getting along. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. <laughs> Everyone is just pals here. Just pals? Just don't want you overworking? Nah. Nah. I haven't been overworked in a long time. We're all trying to do what's best for Martinez here. 
Don't it feel is. like you it can't is. cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends and I am helping you get that nasty body down from the tree and with finding your lost gun. I'm not a jealous guy. So Rustic, here's the thing about me and exhaustion. If I'm tired, you're gonna know it by the way that I respond to questions and everything. And, you know, the way that I don't necessarily look at the camera while I'm actually talking to you guys. It, it, it's... I have a serious difference in energy when I'm exhausted. So don't worry. You'll know if I am exhausted, okay? See so what happened to the previous negotiator, Mr. Gomont? Just said the previous union leader vanished under suspicious circumstances. Why don't you let her in to see you? If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. He doesn't want to see her. Uh -huh. It's as simple as that. How did the previous negotiator, Mr. Gomont? What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. Big man sounds annoyed. He made concessions for the company in previous negotiations. Why would you let an ally like that go? He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. He looks down in God size. Knows how long he's got left. You called him a midget. Harry! He exclaims indignant. people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. Uh -huh. What is this? Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. Abruptly, he I'm smiles and changes kidding, his tone. Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. It's hard to say if he really lost his temper or if this is another one of his tricks. I think we're almost this got him. Man almost never angers visibly. George said the previous union leader vanished under suspicious circumstances. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Oh, shush, oh, Did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. Oh, boy. When she got back, the whole thing was over. The man frowns disapprovingly. Wait, there was no mention of a casserole from Joyce. No, funny, Joyce didn't mention any Harry, casserole. Harry, 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 do not fixate <laughs> on this little matter. Maybe it was a rabbit stew. Oh. Or a hairdryer. Or an iron. So, the point is, he's one of those guys. Mine was. If it's spilled blood you're looking for, then there certainly isn't any in its expression mm -hmm. or demeanor now. At last, Joyce seems to think the union is lowballing her. yes. Low balling, of course. He's suddenly very this serious. This is a casino, Harry. Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here. But everything's a casino for those rich types. His expression makes it clear. This is childish and irresponsible behavior. Now let's talk about something else. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. All right. I have no interest in what she is doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business, and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this. He makes an all-encompassing gesture. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. That's Tell cool. her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everett doesn't mind. It is rather interesting to tell hmm. people things about each other, isn't it? It was nice telling him about her right now. Conceptualization, get out of here. This is weird. Not nice weird, but okay. What's in the container that's outside your office? My dear Harry, there are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. There's something special about it. It was attached to the... Uh, Kvalsen Crane. Harry, you Kvalsen smooth talking crane. son of a bitch. Time Says is a the precious resource, smiles. and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. Smooth talking. Maybe that's the uh -huh. way to go about opening Maybe we can the convince the container. You should at least try convincing it. I'm gonna leave now, Evrat. See you soon, Debarger. Big man Just raises his kidding, hand in farewell. But not too much. I think it's time we leave Mr. Mr. Claire's place. Maybe we need to speak to Kim. Kim? Yes? Oh, I can't convince him yet, okay. Oh, hello. 
More trash, more trash. Pile of cargo belts used for heavy lifting. One says vermilion. Okay. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. Valsen means whale fjord in Arden. Okay. Ooh, we're down to two viewers. Sheesh, everything falls apart here. I'm gonna get up there. I don't think I can yet. There is more trash. Give me. Can everyone watch and drop a prime? That'd be great. King Sturgeon, I love. I love that you're bringing that up. That would be delightful if everybody could drop a prime. That'd be that'd be amazing. 21. It is 21. We need to, uh... We need to go do the thing. We need to go talk to the guy in the apartment. That Sunday friend is around. That's right. You, manana. So, how'd you like our harbor? You've been in there, he means. Talked to the boss man, too. Probably. <laughs> Labor Utopia. It's but a rest area on the path leading across open plains. He now notes solemnly, then turns to you, a wide smile adorning right. his face. You talk to the boss, eye to eye, like men of the plain. If you have any more questions, I'm set to talk. If Rod said you had to have a key to a door, key, huh? he runs his fingers through his mustache. What door is this key supposed to open? He said it belonged to a weasel. Oh, say no more. I got you. Casts the side of his nose with a wink. I got that key right here. Oh, the basement apartment, okay. I tell you, it's mighty good of you to help us out during the strike. Working class solidarity, as they say. Saw an opportunity, I took it, I'm a hustle grinder. Heard something about a weasel, and it didn't sound like a local polar weasel, if you know what I mean. I'm not opening this door for myself, I'm opening it for all working men. I'm not really doing this for political reasons. Um, hustle grinder. <laughs> I'm not so sure about the hustle grind, but, you know, it doesn't matter. He waves at you. It's a good thing you're doing. Thanks. What you're looking for is a basement door behind the greenhouse. Aha, That's okay. That's behind the whirling and rag. That's all I know. Our organization is what you call compartmentalized. Means we keep out of each other's business. Okay, but where did you get the key from? The janitor gave it to me. The janitor? Nice fella. We talked about life and things that really, truly matter. His gaze wanders off into the distance. None of this mess we're in. This jiving and juggling. What's it for? To feed our children, I guess. Anything else I should know about this task, this weasel person, when he'll be home? I'm more of a philosophical dog worker. Okay. I like to talk about the big picture stuff. Who I am, who you are, what we, are we were fighting, fighting for. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Smoke weed every day. Yeah. Love it, entity. Love it. He means he's not going to tell you because <laughs> he doesn't know. But he will shoot his mouth off with you now that you're working for Everhart. Ask him about the Hardy Boys. Do you know anything about the Hardy Boys? Trishess says smoke weed is subscribed. If you want. High strung, but it comes with the responsibility. Rustic, I used to. Not anymore, though. I have not touched any weed for... Three years? Going on four years now? Um, I do vape, like nicotine vape, but other than that, no. They're sort of like you. Preserve the rule of law and all that. Except it's Ebrard's law. But really, they're just like you. Why are you striking? We're negotiating our share. Your share? Aye. He seems pleased with himself. Wait, so not wages or pensions or... 
How large a share would you like? All of it. All of it, However, huh? Right now, we want all the harbor workers to be on the company's board, so they could take part in the decision-making process. This seditious talk sounds like communism. That yeah, sounds good. Just so we're on the same page, communism is basically wanting to kill the rich people or deporting them to a labor camp in South Rhetoric, East come on. Rome. What's up, Black Dragon? How Don't you doing? Say that out loud if you're a communist. Syndicalism. Mm-hmm. The boss man Evrod, what you can what can you tell me about it's him? It's best you make up your own mind now that you've met him. He shrugs. In my eyes, he is a capable organizer and a decent businessman. What does bossing the union entail anyway? I guess you kinda of get to be the village chief. Huh. He oversees the harbor, makes deals with the owners or other relevant parties. Watches out for his own. By that you mean corruption? Tired as always, I feel it, Black Dragon. By heavens, why would he not be corrupt? <laughs> we live in a harsh and disordered world, see? Why would he not be corrupt? And in this world, the old man is corrupt for our benefit, and we know it. Appreciate it, even. He is, personally, not too lavish. Uh, Desk seemed, uh, lavish to he me. He is reasonably lavish, sure. That's his prerogative. It's not like you want a saintly demeanor on a corrupt motherfucker. That would be a manipulative illusion. There you go. Besides, there are no non-corrupt systems in the world anyway, and moralism is the most corrupt of them all. I mean, yeah. This man has political theory, and it has not failed him today. You a communist? No. He pauses to think for a moment. I don't think I'm a communist. Seeing something of value and saying I want it all to myself is a much older and simpler notion. No science to it at all. Manana, you're pretty good. Even a weak child can think it. The only things holding someone back are I can't and I shouldn't. Right on, brother. That's the way the world works, Boyadero. Seem to have spent a lot of time thinking about the political situation. Sure. I've had the necessary free time. Spreads his arms wide, gives the reach. Always time. The look in his brown eyes conjures up an understanding. For him, having command of his time is the most important thing. Waking up at 3 a.m., 3.30 a.m., 3.45 a.m., 4.15 a.m., and he continues waking up. Goodness gracious, Black Dragon. It all comes together now. The way he speaks about scabs, his general attitude. He's a follower of a 500-year-old Franco-Nigerian Boyadero code, itself an appropriation of Vespertine cool. Okay, Encyclopedia, you got to chill here. That of a noble peasant, or a traveling herdsman. True to yourself. Independent in your actions, loyal to your friends. Doesn't sound that cool. It sounds antiquated, obsolete, passe. It's not disco. The man sits on the railing, his hands reaching far and wide. Yet it feels Sipping as is if impossible. He could oh. effortlessly go even wider, if need be, an endless torrent of time. A boyadero is kind of like a troubadour. I knew that. Oh, Black Dragon, I'm sorry that sleeping is impossible for you. Mercenary, eh? Who could have killed him? That's indeed the Mercenary. Question. Why even do such a thing? He shakes his head solemnly. Merc was hanged with a very specific type of cargo belt, one often used in harbors. It had the word vermilion written on it. What a thought. Why would a few would minutes. Have these troopers came and subscribed to Twitch yet? I don't think so, Entity. I don't think they have. Pushed, of course. Pushed, how? Your dead guy was an enemy combatant. What does that mean? He was an agent of the opposition, attempting to undermine our honorable efforts. Did you kill him? I ain't the murdering type, but that's just me. Large organizations like our union have all sorts of men, with all sorts of skills. Uh-huh. He means a more violent faction could easily take care of such a thing. Understood. This has been of limited use. Still, thank you. No problem. I wish the best to you in your search. Sure, I'm glad it's not my search. Good talking to you. Gotta run. We gotta go see our friend. Must go to apartments. Oh, I can't go through here. Gosh darn it. I should... On one hand, also go here. I should talk to the lady and have her get me a set of dice. 
So I'm pretty sure that'll help out with my rolls if I choose the right set. I think. I thought about it in my off time. I was like, you know, it's a dice rolling game. Oh, great. Gosh darn it. Um, flashlight. Bah. Okay, there we go. This way, this way. Come on. Around the right spot. Come on it. There we go. Up here. Talk to the lady. Let's order a set of oh, dice. It's you again. Are you looking for a die? I'd like to order a die from you. Thoughts on calzones? Love them. Amazing. Best thing ever. Um. Uh, about your most extraordinary a die. That fell from the firmament. Those cost more than seven real. Are you sure? I'm a star myself, a superstar, and superstars don't care about money. Yes, you definitely have the proper attitude. Pop my cows on cherry last week. Ooh. 100 sided dice made of ivory and inlaid with lodestone, a naturally occurring magnet to complement your magnetic personality. Pretty good. It's super good, and you can make it out of anything. Pieces of lodestone were used as the first magnetic compasses mm. from which they derived their other name, coarse stones. See, Rustic, I'm more of a, when it comes to pizzas and calzones, I'm more of a meat kind of guy. I really love it. Meat and like a, a cream sauce inside. Then real, and I can get these ready in eight hours. But do magnetic dice even roll properly? It's true. Magnetic dice are definitely different. When rolled together, the magnetic fields of the pips interact with each other to push oh, and yeah. pull on each other as they're rolled, just like all magnetic personalities do. Ah, oh, gotcha, Rustic. Okay. It's a deal. Order the dice hey, set. Let's go. See you in eight hours, then. Was there anything else? Uh, no. We're good. Gonna get ourselves a dice set and increase our uh, rolling odds and everything, I think. Yeah, I think that's what's gonna happen. Um, we need to go out, so let's go down and take this way, because we need to get to that apartment. I didn't know if pastrami is good. Oh, pastrami is delicious on a pizza-esque food. Thank you. Oh, I can't. Oh, the store is closed. Darn it. Okay. Sheep meat. Sheep? I mean, I'm sure it's delicious. I haven't tried it personally, but... Well, I take that back. I have had, uh, have had sheep before. Um, uh, mutton. Very hard to come across it here in the States, at least in a reliable sense. Lamb makes you sick. Lamb is a little rough. I'm not a huge fan of the lamb idea. Normal sheep full grown? Yeah. Tastes like sweaty socks? Oh! Yeah, I can see that. What's going on here? Maroon glow of light pollution rises from the east. Traffic. Night is falling in the city. Talk to the buddy right up here. Hey, man. What you got, man? How you doing? John Dumarie, you found me. Worst part is my mom ate it every day for my entire life. Ugh. The young man on the balcony gives you a bright smile before taking another drag from his cigarette. I had more than a few chances. I bet. His slender figure is backlit by city lights. I know. It's distant streets and motorists. I had the flashlight on. Like diamonds. We're just shining on his gutters here. It feels like a Friday. He seems to be in a good mood tonight. And his shirt is still unbuttoned. Many times has a young rustic eaten what he thought was beef, but turned out to be lamb. Oh, that's a shame. That is so painful. Strami sheep, or you must have the pork variety. Pork is normally what we get. Sheep is the traditional stuff, but um, 
we normally have beef pastrami over here, Black Dragon. Like, beef pastrami is mainly what we have over here in the States. You got your hint. Found the key right under that stone. Beautiful. He replies, smiling as he looks at you. Something sparkles in his so eyes. tell me, are you here to make things right again? I'm not going to make things just right. I'm going to make them spectacular. Beautiful. He says again. A nearby street lamp casts shadows on his chin, drawing out the slender cheekbones. I have some good news for you. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. I told him about you and he'd like to say hello. Oh. Step in. He's already waiting. He nods towards door number 28. By the way, I'm really digging the view here. Mm-hmm. That's why I chose this place. He looks away. Martinez is special, isn't it? His cigarette end glowing in the dark. Wait. Suddenly you're a digging thing? The lieutenant whispers to you, shaking his head. Is it Friday tonight? It feels yeah, like Friday. it does feel like the end of the week. Such gentle weather. Why would I want to meet your friend? Trust me. You do. Very well. I'll talk to him. First, I want to talk to you. I have so many questions. That's nice, but I don't have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for, not me. He takes another drag off his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark and the neighboring windows have lit up one by one. Besides, I've got to run. Run where? To the city. He gestures idly it's towards distant night. motorways. A man on high heels stumbles out of a basement club. Ah, music blasting over the shivers. entire district. It's chilly, and as the chemicals hit his nervous system, a thousand shivers ripple through his body. Oh, only if you promise that we'll talk again. It's important. Something flutters in the corner of the lieutenant's mouth as you're saying those words. We'll talk. The smoker Just assures you. Tonight. Oh, my. Take care, all right? There we go. New skill point. New skill point. Inland Empire. Give it. Why? Because I want to convince Lieutenant Kim that this is a sexy investigation. And he's gone again. Looks like it's becoming a theme for him. <laughs> he's always leaving. Why is he always leaving, Kim? Who knows, detective? It's a mystery. He says, turning his face away from you. There's something so different about him that I just can't put my finger on. Different, of course. <laughs> uh, he smells good why on earth does he smell so good he smells good the lieutenant squints his eyes trying to hold back laughter that's weird right he smells good and that's weird come on detective let's go we've got a potential witness to interview he's sunday <laughs> remember <laughs> he nods at the apartment door before you all right Sunday, friend, here we come. La, 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 la. Oh, yeah, we should probably... You know what? No. I need this here. Quarterly business magazine, huh? Oh, hello. Drama and electrochemistry. <laughs> Party dragon silk robe. Oh my word. Old photo of the same apartment. Dated year 01, huh? Flies for underground parties. Ooh, yes. Dishes soaked up in a pot. An empty ashtray. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why don't we swap these? Oh, now we look like we're a party man. Oh my gosh. Oh my word. Um, it's not fitting quite right. Let's just put this back on for now. There we go. That's better. This quizzy can be made of metal. Oh, canopy bed made of metal. Samarin conical hat. Oh boy. I will right, we'll take it. Buckets of paint on a layer of old newspapers. Alright. 
Oh. Uh, that just seems a little... Oh, dear me. Uh, you know, let's get the encyclopedia back. I don't like wearing that one. Tools. Let's take this off. Put this back in here. Consume. There we go. <laughs> Cannot drink the alcohol, that's all right though. Probs pork, yeah. Officers of the Revachol citizens militia. The man in business casual removes his cufflinks. You shouldn't be seen him in an intimate setting. For some reason you feel this man is your superior. Superior, but he's not in the command chain. My name is Charles Vildrouin. And I am an official with the coalition government. Yeah. I work for the Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Sur la Tour. So, Rustic, does mutton and lamb taste different? Yes. Okay. Um, lamb, of course, is a lot younger. Mutton's a bit older. Um, and both are very delicate. Yeah, lamb is good on the barbecue. Um, mutton can be done many more ways than lamb can but each one is very delicate you have to not overcook it and the line of overcooking it versus undercooking it is so fine you have to be so careful um you also make sure that when you are cooking it you season it ever so gently if you season too much you will ruin the flavor i heard you talking to my friend outside very good super I am here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. <laughs> Before we go on, I absolutely have to inquire about this wonderful canopy. Oh yes, my friend has a great eye for these things. He refuses to tell me where it came from. It's a mystery. <laughs> I believe they call this type of frame industry. It's very But well, you know it's comfy. That's really all I can tell you about. From the little rooftop with his fingers, cold air sweeps in from the balcony. The lieutenant takes out his notebook and nods to you to proceed. You actually witnessed the lynching? I'm sorry to say I did, officer. Oh. -ho. Start from the beginning if you don't mind. Let's not get crazy with it, okay? Officer, it's very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me, like in a play. Continue. What do you mean, like in a play? The lieutenant is already, lieutenant is already scribbling down notes. Look at Discord. Alright, I'll look at Discord, Black Dragon. You got me. There's a lot going on. Uh, let's see. Yeah, no, that's not pastrami. That's a different kind of, um... That is a different kind of meat. Not sure what it is, though. It was just so strange. I could barely comprehend what was happening. What's happening? Barely comprehend it. Hey, you know what I can't comprehend on YouTube, guys? If you're watching this video and you haven't already liked the video, throw a like down, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. Make sure that you ring that bell, get the notifications and everything like that. And also, come follow me on Twitch. We're happy to have you. I stream every single night. I'm doing this for all y'all. All right. It's beef. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Happened, getting some fresh air. I remember that first they came in, carrying what looked like a body. And then I saw all the surrounding windows go dead, one by one. Then the light salted. Ooh, nice. That's when I understood. I should not be seeing this. Sounds like the victim was unconscious, or at least incapacitated. Interesting. How many of them were there? I couldn't tell you exactly. Less than ten. Maybe eight? All right. The lieutenant sends you a sharp look at the mention of that number. Were any of them huge? Like 200 kilograms huge? That's a giant you're describing. No, they were all quite human. As far as I could tell. Okay, so what happened next? I went back inside. Uh huh. Yes, back inside. Keep yourself safe from the killing. Oh, come on, Half Light. Give it up. Were you able to see anything from inside? Officer, the yard was pitch black. There was nothing to see. 
but I could still hear their noises. And were they men? They were threatening to kill that poor man. Were they men? Women? All men, I presume. But again, I couldn't see very clearly. What ethnicity were they? I believe they were mostly white, though I believe I saw two Aeropagites among them. Hmm. And I am quite certain that one spoke with a messy accent. What happened next? Well, that's the strangest part, Professor. Nothing happened. It was oddly quiet for a public lynching. What do you mean, nothing happened? They lynched a guy. Eventually, their shouts died down, and that was all. There were no gunshots, no celebratory shouts, no anything. Why didn't you call the RCM? You're right, of course. The man wipes his that glasses. That is what one is supposed to do in such circumstances. I was simply in shock. He didn't want himself to be found out. I'm afraid I don't have anything else to add. About what time was all this happening, approximately? All I can say is that it was late. So let me get this straight. You didn't actually witness the hanging itself, did you? No, I didn't see the corpse until the following day. That was a waste of time. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more assistance. What's an official like you doing in Martinez? The coalition is only looking out for the price stability. Inflation is a killer, like a heart disease blocking the normal circulation of the economy. It must be controlled. The economy impacts the entire international community, which is why it requires international oversight. Ah, uh, but what are you doing here in this apartment? Ah, uh, well, I'm renovating it. Uh huh. It is an interesting project. The building used to be a 12-story skyscraper before the cannons took the top four stories off. This, of course, happened when the coalition forces landed here. Sir, I'm trying to find out why you're referred to as a Sunday friend. Now, are you or are you not enjoying the company of this friend? You could say I'm undoing some of the material damage the international community caused when we arrived here. What's up, Ryan? Welcome back. So you're some kind of bureaucrat? Yes, as I said before. I am a commissioner from Sur La Clé, working for the Institute of Price Stability. This is one of the watch. main projects of the Moral Inter. Wait, there isn't actually an Institute of Price Stability, is there? Enjoy the Lord Ryan. Is. God, it's impossible to understand whether someone from the Moral Inter is joking or not. What is this international community? La communauté internationale is what Rivacholian's colloquial oh, right. the coalition. In other words, the nations that stopped the disaster of the revolution. What is the price stability? It is the most important thing. That uh, doesn't tell me anything. It's the central goal of any sound monetary policy. Maintaining the price stability is essential to maintaining high levels of economic activity. Which is essential for maintaining high levels of employment. <laughs> Ryan, we're not talking to the person about Dubois anymore. Which is essential for maintaining the social stability. Okay, Basically, boy. to make sure the price of bread doesn't change. Yeah. Precisément. Precisément. Too much inflation, bread becomes too expensive. Too much deflation, it becomes too cheap for bakers to produce. That's why the Institute of Price Stability works to keep inflation just below 2%. Below two percent of what? But not too far below. No, too below is also bad. Below, but close to two percent. You're not answering my questions at all. The coalition believes the bureaucrat. The of informing the public about the benefits of the price stability. Transparency is one of our principles. Would you like an informational pamphlet? Yeah, right, sure. Give me a leaflet. A sound monetary policy is essential for addressing uncertainty. Stability is the reason of the moral <laughs> I go for it's it, the Ryan. reason why I identify as a moralist. Okay. But, oh, I don't have my leaflets on me today. Oh, come That's on. You can always Boy. call our information line. Making information available is part of the moral intern's commitment to transparency. I've heard about this moral intern before, but I want to know more. It's the international organization for moralists. Hence, Moralist International. The Institute of Price Stability is just one of its many mind babies, as is the coalition. <laughs> Turn to Kim, so what I'm hearing is that we're moral intern bitches? Doing one's job doesn't automatically make one anyone's bitch. Besides, there are more nefarious powers to work for than the moral intern. Turns back to Sunday Friend, are you a moralist? But of course. 
Am I a moralist? Do you value freedom? Do you believe in a normal, stable world governed by democratic values? But what is a normal, stable world? The Occident is part of the normal. Oranier sur la clé. Martinez doesn't seem very normal or stable Martinez? to me. Martinez? No. Martinez is something else. What about the rest of Revachol? Is it part of the normal world? Revachol is generally difficult. It's led by an interim government, which means it hasn't yet achieved full democracy. Okay. But they are working towards it. You're all doing very well here, uh -huh. relatively speaking. He gives you an approving nod. Let's see, we got four options. I don't think I'm a moralist. Moralism sounds incredibly boring. I want more action. Or two, moralism is the ideology of foreign occupiers. Revachol must be governed by Revacholians. Three, democracy is a meaningless sham as long as the working class is under the boot heel of capital. Four, it's like every time I'm talking to people, I'm choosing option D, none of the above. Is that moralism? <laughs> no, let's do this. I don't think I'm a moralist. Moralism sounds... It, it, oh, but option D sounds great. Let's do that. Is this option D... Healed morale. ...usually the most reasonable answer? Uh, some, everything else is super extreme. It's like I'm living with a bunch of lunatics. Sounds like you're a moralist indeed, my friend. Welcome. All right. Moralism is all about compromise and achieving the achievable. It's pragmatic, pragmatic. and level-headed, an ideology for doers. Are you a doer, my friend? Maybe. It looks to me like you are. Okay. Now, enough of this delightful political interview. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? Tell me about Sur le Clé. What's there to say? Sur la Clé is a modern, urbanized <laughs> country that measures very high on the human development and freedom index. Mostly, though, it's known as the executive heart of EPIF. Rustic, you seem to be a pretty smart chap. You know of politics? I know quite a bit. Why? Why do you ask? Very least attuned. Oh. Oh. Well, looks like my chat disconnected. Give me a second, everybody. The, the recording's still going on. Ah. Uh. Be aware... Stream Marino freeze. That's right. Stream Marino froze. It'll come back in a second. And there we go. Now it's back. Alright, sound off, Rustic. I need to know that I'm back in business. Please let me know before I continue on. Please, please, please tell me that the stream is going. I think it's going. It looks like it's going. It's showing on Twitch. Let's refresh Twitch page. And a va bam. Okay. Looks like we're doing good. All right, good. We're back. But yeah, as far as, um, you know, politics, I do know quite a bit about politics. I, am I a scientist in it? Do I know that much? No, but I know dangerously enough. Moreover, it is a great sponsor of less emerged countries. Revachol is only one of its many darlings whose progress it supports and cherishes. What makes Revachol sur la Clef's darling? Because a great percentage of Revachol's culture hails from sur la Clef. Its language, its people, its cuisine even. Or at least in the downtown La Delta area. Tell me about Orangi. Orangi is an example Orangi. of a nation who, as a core member of EPIS, contributes 28%. 28%? That's a lot. Land. Next to Sur La Clé, Orangi is probably the most prominent member of the international community. Uh, which one of them is more EPIS? As founding members, they are both very EPIS. EPIS. Orangier carries a lot of political weight, while Sur la Clé takes care of the business side of things. Sur la Clé hosts the headquarters of the major EPIS institution. Um, rustic. But when it comes to politics, I leave that out of my streams. Um, if you want to talk about politics, you can always send me a private message, that sort of thing, and I'm happy to chat. But we'll leave it out of the streams. Welcome back, Ryan. Orangier's economy. <laughs> is one of the most advanced in the world. It has successfully transitioned from heavy industry to oh, advanced yeah, services yeah. and generally acts as an engine for sustainable change in the international community. Alexis, can't you just talk like a normal person? About what? 
about Oranier. Just tell me what it's like there. Oh, it's very urban and very well organized. Their streets are clean, their horse cars run on time, the people are polite and efficient. Like I said, they are an example for less emerged nations to follow. Right, since there was no water. Oh no. <laughs> we'll discuss anything of that sort. That's fine, Rustic. Um, if it does come to a point where in the chat there is a political conversation going on, enjoy it while it is. Um, as long as it doesn't turn into like throwing eggs at each other. And that's when I shut it down. Whatever you wish, officer. Can you tell me about your friend? Ah, my friend. My friend is a good young man. His family immigrated here from Kedra, and life has not been easy for him. But he understands the importance of education. He has taken his future into his own hands, and that's all that matters. Right. Uh, great, I'm gonna thirst to death. No! What's Kedra? Kedra is a candidate member of APIS. But, between you and me, their potential membership is a more contentious issue. What do you mean? That it's never going to happen. They enter negotiations in 21, and it's been pending ever since. What's this EPIS thing you keep talking EPIS about? EPIS is a very special program developed by the Moral Intern to support certain Occidental nations. It began as a unified system of weights and measures, which proved to be a wild success. Nothing but kilograms and centimeters as far as the eye can see. Uh -huh. It was such a wild success that we expanded it into an economic union for the processing of steel. Another success. And between you and me, the Moral Intern feels emboldened by this success. Emboldened to take EPIS to the next level. Okay, but like, what does it stand for? Why, it stands for progress and stability. No. Like the Moral Intern as a whole. What do the letters stand for? It's been such a wild, extraordinary success this year. We are very excited to take it to the next level. You don't even hear the words I'm saying, do you? The supranational Political Alliance. Uh, the United States of Occident. Is it going to be like this place here? You mean Revachon? No, it's going to have transparent democracy. Is Revachol going to be part of EPIS? It's one day going to be a candidate member of EPIS, sure. Didn't you say that candidate members never become real members? No, no, candidate members do become members. Why do we even have the whole system in place if they don't? It just takes time. Time and evaluation. But we were talking about my friend here, not politics. <laughs> How did you two... That's what I'm thinking, Entity. That's what I'm thinking is going on here. <laughs> How did you two even become friends? How did any of us become friends? Bad things <laughs> happening on the insulin Peninsula. Oil it's perfect timing, really. In the night. Civil wars lasting for years. Finally, the international community is forced to step in. You're describing how the coalition occupied Revachol. Work doing the work thing. That's ah, gotcha. One of the wonders of democracy is that everyone is allowed to have his own opinion, and not just allowed, encouraged. Even. Have you ever tried debate? Man pats his pockets, looking for something. What do you mean? Debating. You should consider joining a debating society. Oh. I hear that. Oh, he's so nerdy. I used to have a flyer for one, but. He's He's so nerdy. Now that I start thinking of it, it was for an improv class anyway. Uh -huh. It's this funny theater thing, you know? Very creative. <laughs> Helps oh, relieve you. stress. You someone told me who he is. Sorry. Who? The man throws a quick glance at his watch. Your friend, the smoker on the balcony. We were just talking about but him. I told you, officer. He's a bright young man here to pursue his education. What's his name? Education is the foundation of our future, especially the arts. It is a cornerstone of our civilization. But what's his real name? Officer, you have to understand. I can't give you his personal information. Dude, come on. I'm sure you have your own methods and databases, right? Please don't put me in this situation. So all you can tell me about him is that he's here to study the arts? He's deeply enmeshed in the study of the fine arts, yes. Which arts? He's a truly free spirit. He likes all the arts. Perhaps graphic design, printmaking, who knows? The world is open wide for a talented youth. Man, he dances around questions. What are you doing in his apartment by yourself? I'm just enjoying the view. The man smiles, nodding to the window. Isn't it rude for your friend to leave you uh, enjoying the view? There's a dead body hanging in the tree. A dead body we still need to get down, by the way. Oh yeah, we haven't spoken to the guy. Listen, 
He says, raising his hand. What? I'm not hearing anything. I um, was asking about your friend. My friend comes and goes. I'm sure you've seen him around. He's a busy bee. I had something else in I'm mind. All ears, officer. Thanks, I've got all a I need. Moment. Officer, do you have everything you need from me? I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once you leave. Well, why can't we talk later? It's against diplomatic best practices for an official in my position to be discussing murders with local militiamen. He pauses. And I'm pressed for time. After you leave, I should be leaving as well. Uh, not going anywhere. Just want to have a look around sure. at this apartment. Go ahead. It's a beautiful space. Let me know if you have any further questions. Moderacy and everything, even in moderacy. What is wrong with this dude, bro? Bro, he can calm down. Okay. Totally calm down. So, I need to talk to Jean-Luc. Get him to take the body down from the tree. Which we'll do just a second. His jargon is on a whole other level. Oh, yeah. I've spoken to people like that before. When I was a barber, I had a couple of people in my barber chair who were like that. And God, was it hard to talk to them. It's like, you don't answer any questions, do you? It's almost his own language, like Measurehead. Yeah, just about, but his is actually, like, more realistic than Measurehead. Sure, there are people like Measurehead out there, but they're not, you know... Not as realistic as, uh, the Sunday Friend was. That was a bit rough. It hurts me to know how accurate that was. Oh, wait. Is he not going to be here? 10.30 in game. Rare birds. Mm-hmm. Jean-Luc. Sign of good writing. A, a yes, exactly. Not presume this has drastically altered our race dynamic. Knocked you out like a god of martial arts. True. I said nothing about our personal dynamic. That has altered. He adds. He means very little. We could subscribe to his advanced race theory, but I don't think we should. Everyone told you to help us get the body down from the tree. So it was. You bested me in race combat to reach my superior. Then had him give me an order. I salute your cunning, enemy. I will go and remove the body from the tree with my, my bare, bare hands. hands. You're so noble, Measure Head. No, you're not. But while I am gone, someone must stand guard on the bridge. That someone needs to be you. Turns to Lieutenant. Both of you. That would mean you're openly showing the people that you're taking the mean ones side. Lieutenant, what if we don't want to do this that? This is the uncomfortable result of not taking it down ourselves. I can live with compromise. Well, you can live with it, okay. Listen to your little friend. He is wise in his childlike way. His mysterious race may yet prove fierce competition to my heroic Hamlet group. Wait, that means showing everyone that we're taking orders from the Union. Yes. That is precisely what it means, Homunculus. This is not going to happen any other way. Alright, then. Hey, see that they stay here the whole time. Alright, cool. Let them go. Do your thing, boy. Boo. The woman's gaze follows Measurehead as he leaves. So, you guys are like cops or something? <laughs> We're just trying to keep things from going to shit. Have you ever thought that maybe things should go to shit? The woman twirls her hair. You, by the way. Oh, you hear hey. that sound? He's breaking something. 
Shandok must be really tearing it up over there. I wish I could see it. Uh, I also wish I could see it. Don't worry. Physical stuff like this is really easy for measure head. Never did this before. I didn't know the measure head could get too. the body down. Oh, it's okay. Really spiritual, you know. She looks around. Uh, so, Rustic, in yours, were you unable to actually knock out um, measure head? We learned that her name was Katya. Oh, okay. It's late outside, isn't it? You guys must really like doing what you do to be out so late. She turns to behold the behemoth appearing around the corner, approaching the gates. The corpse has been removed from the tree. He brushes wood flakes off his hands. Stand down and congratulate yourself. You have sided with Ray's victory ah. today. You had to briefly internalize racism. Got it. When it served its purpose, got rid of the thought. Fair enough. There's been no side choosing. We did what we had to do to keep order. And what you had to do was to become a union man for all to see. We're gonna leave now, thank you. Thankfully, we didn't have to subscribe to the race theory. I mean, we still could have, but yeah. Still haven't figured out how to get rid of the thoughts yet. Still uh, haven't figured that out. Alright. Still need to talk to her again. <laughs> Kuno. You're right there, buddy. a good show before. A kid came by and he said it was empty. Aha. He fucked the tree up. Fucked it good. It was porno. Oh, you had poor physique. Got it. A 3% chance. Holy cow. Okay. Uh, let's see. We gotta... Gotta speak to him. I, I don't approve of this language, but we're gonna... Gonna do it here. Uh-huh. Uh Stop choking, Kuno! <laughs> Why he's got you in a chokehold? Kuno's not fucking choking. He got his throat like he's choking. <laughs> Choked you out there. So it's right for using reactionary shit. Like fuck you did. Mm -hmm. Kuno's gonna keep saying kip forever now. Kip, 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 kip. He only gets two kips out before he coughs. Shit. The fuck did you want anyway? You got your fuck bag down. Now let's talk normal shit. Oh, now you want to have a nor Now you want a normal conversation, yes, huh? Yes. Kuno wants a normal conversation. Ask normal shit, please. He even sounds a little plaintive now. Uh, I need more empathy. Apparently, I can't Kuno do that without empathy. Alright, Kuno. Whatever. Let's look at the body. The corpse lies on the ground among the remains of an absolutely demolished pine wood branch. It's gently laid on one side. <laughs> Beautiful wipe it here from your eye. Well, it's down. Mr. Measure Head has done a good job. Nothing is too broken or compromised. The victim is ready for a field autopsy. Wait, I had to add a point to what? Empathy? Why right, wasn't it empathy? I think it was empathy. Um, save points. Save points. Okay, okay. I got you. I got you. A field autopsy. Yes. One, investigation of the scene. Two, initial examination of the victim. Uh oh. Three, field autopsy. Four, transportation of the body to the morgue. Extra points on hand will be a hint. Gotcha. The RCM's four-phase murder scene processing manual. The fuck are they on about? Cops gonna cut his shit up. There's someone else for this. <laughs> Don't we have someone else to cut his shit open? It's not about cutting. It's meant to the corpse. You and I are detectives. The honorary rank of detective signifies no, our you. ability that... to handle the entire incident chain, from autopsy to cleanup to social work. That, Rustic, that's a great tip. I really appreciate it. 
Don't consider it backseat gaming. That's tip giving. That's awesome. <laughs> the honorary rank of detective. Wait, honorary rank? An honor and a burden ah. attached to your rank once you've proven yourself able. Usually after five to eight years of field work. Mine is lieutenant detective. Yeah, I feel like a you detective. Are. Your station would not have assigned you on this case if you weren't. Now... The lieutenant adjusts his glasses oh dear. and takes a deep breath. Tell me something, dead man. Shoot, loony Rony. Oh, that's enough. Come back later, Corpo. First, what exactly? Lose yourself with my frank manners. Uh, what's a field autopsy? Officer, you know what a field autopsy is. Oh, no. I've done a hundred of them. What you do know is, at 18.9 kilometers, the dormant shield volcano, <sighs> Corpus Windy, is the world's highest sun. Encyclopedia, come on. The of the 38th single, Epui de Saint, to crack the top 20, was the death knell of disco. But what a field autopsy is, you have no idea. Why don't you know? What use are you? You must have me confused with the Copperpedia. Who's the Copperpedia? I think I need to talk you, to him. sir, you are the Copperpedia. All right, do you have another pair of gloves? Unfortunately, no. I have gardening gloves. Maybe they're enough. They're better than nothing. Yes. Tell you what, I perform the anatomical side of things while you will take notes. You just fill this in, right? Show them the red field autopsy form in your ledger. That's right. Okay, open the ledger. The field autopsy form. The dead man stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with. Okay. One, assistant. That's you. All right, Harry Dubois. The corpse is indifferent to your scribblings just lies there the next box says coroner's case number kk57-0803 dot 0815 write it down next name na next date of birth NA. age hmm. roughly 50 roughly 50 okay dry 40 the damage is so extensive it's better to err on the young side I'm gonna write about 42 he nods. Six. Race. Mondial. Mondial. Fair to olive skin from the Isola of Mwindi. This is as vague as it gets. You might as well say whitish. Write it down. A pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither Mondial nor anything other. Sex? Often. Ha <laughs> ha! The little monster exclaims energetically. Male. Male. <laughs> Pigs get off sex? Right, fucky, fucky, right, male, right, pig, right, male. Nor does he look <laughs> male it. with his pregnant belly and indistinguishable face. Date of death. We're still going with March 4th, 51. Right, 04, 03, 51. What else? Nine. Body identified by is non applicable. Ten. Case number is the same as the coroner's case. Okay. KK 57 0503. 0815 listens motionless with the cargo belt still around his neck only one box remains 11 evidence of treatment none at least not after the initial examination not so sure didn't the footprints look like he was carried over they'd have to have incapacitated and carried <clears throat> him over this man was more than a match for untrained dog walkers Places his hand on the dead man's chest as if in preparation. Your central nervous system recognizes this gesture. Oh. It's the stations of the breath. Okay. Ecclesiastic, religious in nature, a holdout from pre-Delorean burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform. Then, somewhere in Jamrock North, <laughs> a small wood shed behind Rosencrantz Row, Lieutenant Nick Feuerbach puts his hand to the chest of a small corpse no larger oh, than a dear. body. It's raining outside, light drizzle. There is darkness in the shed. Elsewhere yet, an obese female sits in a wicker chair. What is going on? silhouette ball-like against the window. Outside, Grand Coudon. The day is turning dim for Sergeant Mac Dawson. Hand extended, he approaches. To make sure she is dead, 
more than anything else. Esprit de corps, what are you doing? The building is tall. There you Certain go, shivers. That's what I like. In solitude, most of the apartments are unoccupied. This was a suicide. The other, an accident. The small one. Aww. And so, all across Jamrock, Coal City, G R I H, 42 deceased persons found today. 42 stations of breath. Okay. We should start the postmortem. Turn the page. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copy paper tries to answer why. External examination summary. Clothes. The it begins. BC's wears armored boots and white briefs. The make of the briefs is Babrodin, I think. Let's see. Turns the body onto its side to check the underwear label. See, it's happening. Oh gosh. Esprit de corps is like the cop stat. It gives cop stories at related times and decodes cop lingo. Okay, gotcha. Babrudin, yes. Inexpensive. Size M. Color white. That's what you assumed at least. Not 100% sure. To me, Esprit de corps, which is spirit of the body, um, I think that what it is is like the connection with everything else or like out of body experience like seeing everything from a third or fourth person point of view the disappointment is palpable the red-haired thing was expecting something the red-haired thing yeah it can be super confusing it the seems boots are ceramic vitreous enamel they are fused to his skin from blood flowing downward post-mortem removal of the boots is left for processing write it down the boot has a serial number it's E50.100.100. The lines between the plates are in the shape of the alpha numerical. The number is purposefully concealed by the designer. But it's speed to call monologues always mention cops, perhaps because we are a cop. Co workers usually. Exactly. Tattoos. He stands up, feet planted on either side of the body. The upper torso is covered in a single, continuous tattoo, resembling a national pattern. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings to be added to the case files as document A1. The photo is taken <laughs> on the scene using a triggered mini. I didn't think of that. Yeah. Um, shivers is what gives you... I, I think Shivers is one of my favorite ones that we get out of this. The deceit has a belt for airlifting cargo around his neck, tied with a hangman's knot. Color yellow length three meters there is a buckle on the other end rustic says so manana is a speed the course stat tells him about other dock workers exactly and what's going on with them at any given point well nourished athletically built measuring 1.8 meters Pretty generally tall. consistent well kind of tall 42 preservation is good ambient temperature below freezing the spine is bent more than the lieutenant compensated for this buster's actual height is about 1.85 and no he could Cannot not take, take him straight, straight on. on so i love watching playthroughs exactly you get the other you know viewpoint or different information that may you know give you that oh wow you get to learn new things and see other perspective exactly i'm gonna write 1.85 meters lieutenant i undercompensated he pockets the tape body hair is light brown distribution is consistent with the age the he deceit the had male pattern baldness. Hair is combed back, short. Touch the corpse's hair before moving on. His hair feels wet, soaked with rain, cold to touch. Not that different from a living person. Yeah, the fog. A swim. The fog is atmospheric AF. You're right. Stroke his hair gently. The stench is suffocating. Oh. Strands of dark brown hair oh. start sticking to your hand like thread. <laughs> Of a rag doll's head. I'm glad we didn't actually stroke the head because that probably would have pulled, peeled the scalp off. There's brilliant time in there. There it is. He's combed his hair back with oil. Write it down, adding the brilliant time. Lividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest, and thighs. Consistent with stones thrown post mortem. Low velocity. Fucking low velocity. This kid explodes. It's all good, Rustic. About. Velocity was fucking max. <laughs> it's all good. Hey, I still found my way to it. Talking shit about Kuno's velocity. 
In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest, consistent with predation. Since you are... Since you are... Barber, couldn't help myself. Ah, gotcha. Oh, the Briantine. Ah, oh, gotcha. <laughs> it's true. I don't think I ever got to work with Briantine. Um, let's see. Amend for high velocity. Yeah, let's do that. Let's amend for high. No. It, uh... No, let's write you it down. Mark. Look at your mark. The lieutenant produces a small folding knife. With the other hand pulling on the belt, he starts cutting into the polyester. The stench is horrid. After a while, it's obvious the material cannot be cut. It's a bit old-fashioned. Um, probably still used up until the 50s or the 60s, though. The steel wiring. You can ah, see it's breathless. It. We need to remove the belt so we can get to the ligature mark. You've got just the right tool for that. Oh, yeah. The chain cutters. Good thing we got these chain cutters. Always good to think ahead. Now... He points to the rope squeezing the dead man's neck. We need to cut the belt to see the ligature mark below. Carefully. With as much precision as you can. See? My pig is gonna fuck his head off. Oh, come on. Shut up. No, he ain't. Your pig's a boring fuck. Okay. Let's try and increase this even more. We had pretty bad, uh... Pretty bad rolls. Look for a good spot to cut. The belt is equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck, swelling over the edges like white bread rising from the yeast. The knot is the weak spot. The chain cutters fit in there. Steady now. Like a flower arranger. Two cuts and it should come loose. 97% very high. Let's roll. After there we go. Deliberation, you sink the cutters into the knot tying the belt together. You squeeze the rubber handles together, sweat forming on your brow. Yeah, press down. Snap. The knot is slashed. Another cut, and the belt falls apart Ugh. like a flower bouquet, <laughs> revealing the I know, right? neck and the dark red ligature mark around it. That anticipation. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck. Lieutenant has kneeled closer, running his finger along the dark red groove, until there's a gap. As it ought to. This is where its grip on the curdled meat is gentlest, pulling up. Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. Okay. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from 1 or 1.5 meters. Ah. Write it down. Chest is intact. Normal contour. Abdomen is protuberant. Pelvis intact. Genitalia. He pulls down the man's underpants. Oh. No! <laughs> Let's get out of its teeth! I fucking knew it! This is clearly what they've been waiting for ever since the autopsy <sighs> began. The lieutenant is trying to make it as boring as possible. Genitalia is male and unremarkable. Unremarkable. No evidence of injury. It looked like he was enjoying his moment of death. Ah, yes. Your hunch before. We can have a semen analysis requested from processing, if that's what you meant. Uh, um, no, I was trying to get a psychic read. No, you weren't, officer. That would be preposterous. He shakes his head. Just write down that we request a semen, vaginal, and anal fluids analysis. All right. The corpse with his pants down does not have an opinion on the subject. <laughs> All he has is genitals and a deathly odor. Do we inspect the genitals? I think we do. The dead man's penis is average sized congested from the downward collection of blood. The testicles are uneven in length, hanging underneath. The genitalia is greenish. Marbling is present around the crotch. Oh. You should touch it. What? What? Electrochemistry? What are you... Uh... Touch it. Doesn't feel like anything. Just cold flesh under your finger. Unremarkable and I'm alive. Electrochemistry, where are you taking me? My pig's so fucking ill right now. This voice swells with pride. Pretty sick, I've got to say. This wasn't necessary. What's going on here? Why are you doing that? <laughs> back. Welcome back, Ryan. I'm detecting. Police work. Doesn't have to be solicited. It's an experiment to see what happens. 
Uh, the lieutenant is unaware of what's happening in okay, your head good. and why you're touching. <laughs> he merely expects you to write down his notes on the man's genitalia so you can move on. I figured not, Ryan. I figured you weren't trolling. You don't seem like that to me. Write it down. Add the semen sample. symmetrical and intact. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are all combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. Bullets have bitten little pieces out of him. Uh -huh. It must have been excruciating, especially the hip. Before you is a temple of pain, that new little tenderness in life. In addition, I see smaller, residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. That's a lot of scarring. From wounds sustained over two, maybe more decades. Dispersal and <laughs> That's all right, Ryan. Long and active combat duty. All right, take care, Ryan. Last item, hands. Picks up the man's right hand in his, inspects it, then moves on to the other hand. Pick up the hand. His flesh is cold, icy. Pleased to meet you. Where are you from, and what's your name? My name is. I'm only fucking with you. <laughs> I know where you're from. From Cappadocia, and your name is Il Corbo. What can I do you for, Il Corbo de Cappadocia? Um, we've met before. I've touched your genitals. That you have, Kobo. That you have. We're real tight that way, in that special, special way. Look, electrochemistry made me do it. Okay, I had no hand we in this. We should do this more often. Be close like this. I mean. Hands are clean. No sign of injury from struggling. The dead man's fingers slip from your hand, cold and sausage-like. Were we expecting any? I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, this stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Okay, write it down. Ooh. That's just... all for the external. Well done. What next? He turns to the side to breathe. It's not enough. He buries his face in the sleeve of his jacket. You hear a muffled voice. All right, internal examination. Let's go. Central nervous system. He says and I then concludes no abruptly. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? We don't even have a joke. <laughs> That's a shame. Nope, right in Mr. a... Skeleton. Purge fluid is coming <laughs> from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Hiery bone. Let's see. Gets close to the swollen mouth hole, eyes squinting from the fumes. With his eyes almost closed, the lieutenant puts uh. his hand on the dead man's throat uh. and begins to massage it. Oh, Gently, a rotting smell no. erupts from the mouth. Oh. Runs down his lips, black and viscous. Disgusting. Yeah, jack that fucker up. Excuse me, Kuno S. The hyoid bone is fractured. Oh. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact. Unremarkable. Write it down. Respiratory system. Back hunched as if in prayer, he begins to pry open the dead man's jaws. He stops to exert more force. Both hands are used. He's really doing it. The dead man's teeth cut into his gloved hands. Dang! No! Oral cavity shows no lesions. The victim has received a dental implant, possibly after a combat wound. Mouth swollen. Hemorrhaging present in mucosa, the lips and mouth. Look inside the dead man's mouth. No scream. No sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there. Sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again. Oof. Straight in the mouth of his. Ah, gotcha, Black Dragon. No, you don't. You can keep it in. You can keep anything in. Look deeper inside. You manage to suppress the contractions trying to enter your stomach. All it takes is concentration. Through it, you see nothing but darkness. More meat and darkness. There are ancient mysteries. Oh, Inland Empire, come on. Ask me later. Yuck. Hemorrhaging present in mucus. The lieutenant repeats impatiently. He lets go of the jaws, the mouth snaps shut before you. Hepatobiliary. NA. He wipes his brow. Why? Don't we have anything? Uh, are you a hepatobiliary expert? He looks at the corpse's stomach with a mixture of tiredness and disgust. I don't think so. Neither am I. And that's it. That's it. All right, right, N.A. Same for toxicology and serology, N.A. Both? Unless you have untapped reservoirs of knowledge there. 
The completionist in me wonders if there's something we could still do. We already have one test, as per regulation. And we already requested semen. Oh, we only have one test, okay. They requested semen like it's no big deal. Is he touching it again? What is wrong with these monsters? Um... We change it to toxicology. It seems prudent. That's a big. Oh, that's a big implication. Yeah. Can we change it to toxicology? At a request, then, we'll know if drugs or poisons remain in his blood. He looks at the at monster. This stage, I doubt processing will find anything, even if he was brimming with it. Right. And A and add toxicology request. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet, and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with the hanging. Yeah, Black Dragon, this is definitely more adult stuff. Write it Destroy down. Destroy intestinal. He breathes a sigh of approaching relief. This is the last field on the list. He looks around to the ground, the pool of feces Digested there. Digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. He touches the corpse's bloated lower abdomen briefly. Write it down. Uh, keep the voila. What's next on the list? Description of injuries. Summary. Let's, Let's go. See. We have... Bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one too. Uh, what about the injuries we have inflicted? Oh, so we inflicted them? Okay, I have inflicted. Okay, so there's a spin stabilized munition from a kill in 919 lodged in his lung. I don't think we should mention that. Better not to muddy the waters. Um, I, uh, but isn't that sloppy? Be pedantic if you like, it doesn't matter. No one else is going to investigate this man's murder. And if they do, such details would only confuse them. See, Fair enough. These pigs are fucking corrupt. The boy nods approvingly. Why don't you fuck him if you love him so much? Good lord. Now, injuries. What's the fourth injury field for? Nothing. Just in case. Alright, bite marks. Head. Chest and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused ah, okay. damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. Write it down. And your opinion, officer? Beneath the description, there are two boxes waiting to be ticked. Non fatal, post mortem. Agreed. Next injury? Contusions. So, the scalp bleeds from a post mortem head injury, a stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. The perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post mortem. At maximum velocity, fucko! Has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. <laughs> Write it down. Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp <laughs> and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath the description of injury, two boxes. Non fatal post mortem. Right. Next. Ligature mark. A dark red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical column intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. Write it down. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. What was that about no chlorine around the neck? You'd be chlorine for your life. Opinion, fatal injury. That's it. We have established cause of death. Cracks an it's uneasy much, smile. And it leaves much to be questioned. But it's a start. Let's wrap this up. I pronounce this field autopsy over. First, how did it go? Well, we established probable cause of death. Some would say that's the goal of an autopsy. What, Rustic? What's up? We requested a test to be run on the genitals, but was the règle. The results should arrive in a couple of weeks if we are lucky. I will not hold my breath. Look, see, pain threshold did give a good argument for non-fatal, but the problem is, if he was just unconscious when they put him up there, it would still be fatal. He may have been completely asleep when they dropped him and snapped the hyoid bone. We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. 
Oh, yeah. Well done, Master Detective. Maybe a drink is in order? Perhaps a drink is in order, later I mean? Now, you see, that worries me. He wipes his forehead. You die if you drink. You know that, don't you? You are proving a useful detective. The organization would miss you. Oh, he, he praised us. What now? I need a copy of that autopsy form. Then I will drive him to Faubourg. About a copy of the autopsy oh, pages. He looks at the dead man one more time, then at the slip of red paper in his hand, then at the corpse again. He's thinking, did I miss something? Hmm. 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 I'm sure we didn't get everything. There's always something. Perception, huh? Let's see if we can roll for this. You run no. your hands over the victim's cold body, his limbs, his torso with its swollen organs. Maybe you should be more thorough. Look at his pants the again. The in his breeches continue to be unnoteworthy. Point? You see the penis of oh, a dead man. Oh, yes. Okay. If you've seen it once, you've already got the picture. Don't touch there me again. There is no need. We have been thorough. Do you think we missed something? You can't shake the feeling that there are more secrets concealed in the flesh before you. Uh, something we're not seeing. Okay, well, we are in leave of Mortis here. He is disintegrating. We need to refrigerate the body if we want to conduct another examination. And we need to do it fast. Where do we find a fridge for the body? Hey, wasn't there a <laughs> giant ice bear sarcophagus below that building? If I the commercial area, there was. Why, yes, there was. It was massive. Red eyes glowing in the dark. Why, yes, there was. Well, detective, I've rarely been disappointed by the size of a giant ice bear fridge. But I think we should still take a look at it first. Make sure it's big enough before we carry him over. Let's move. With every hour, whatever we are looking for in the deceased will become harder to find. The bear has a use? I never knew. There we go. <laughs> Alright, let's go! Almost out of time for this particular day. Quickly, down below we go. <laughs> Other than the ice conf confections, of course, that's right. Examine the bear cooler. The bear's eyes are dead and empty. Ice inside the fridge slowly melting. The power has been cut off. So what do you think of this fridge, Kim? It looks big enough for two corpses. It's certainly an eccentric choice. But it's more than big enough and cold enough. Honestly, it's perfect. All we have to do is plug the fridge back in. Right. Because I had bad physique, I didn't get into the basement until later into the case. Gotcha. Uh, let's see. Mm, plugs in. Down and over here. Right here. Both cables are unplugged from a giant Jared. electric mammal awakens. The dead body is going to be safe in the embrace of its cold innards. Great. The owners of this building will just have to keep paying for the electricity sucked up by this monstrosity a little longer. Let's return to the fridge. That's right. To the fridge! The bear's eyes are still glowing red, watching over all the ice cream wrappers hidden inside its belly. Fridge is plugged in now. Will you help me with the body, Kim? Of course. I'll take the head. You take the feet. It's not going to be the easiest thing in the world, but we'll manage. Do it. The two of you. Easily. Alright, let's do this. The body is heavier than you and stinkier. It takes half an hour. Half an hour? The lieutenant takes a step back <laughs> to admire your handiwork. I would totally buy ice cream out of a giant bear with red glowing eyes. That, that would also be a really cool marketing campaign. Beautiful. A dead body in a nice bear fridge. Hey. This is some of the best body's work I've ever done. <laughs> Pre-rotting corpse. Oh, of course, of course, you of course. definitely earn a drink after this. Perhaps even some pagan rites. 
Yes, we need to celebrate by performing pagan rites. Let's bring out the meat and set it on fire. I knew you would say that. I knew you would say that. said vigorously. No this is paganistic enough, and it does not leave this room. <laughs> this isn't police work, Kim. It's art. We're artists, and this was our vision. If I were an artist, this would certainly not be my vision. We earned an achievement. Much, much more conservative in my Il work. Il Copo dell'Art. <laughs> He's right. His work would be much more formal. At least we've stopped the body from decomposing further. That's right. Now you can conduct another inspection under controlled circumstances. Beautiful. Inside the icy realm of the ice bear fridge, the oh. corpse stands slumped, waiting. Wonder perception. Where is it? There it is. Forty-two percent. All right. You know what? Give him more. Perception will help us, anyways. There, that's that's better. All right, roll it. You touch really? The dead man's body. His skin is cold, <sighs> light blue and silvery in the light of the fridge. You still have no idea where to begin. Wow. Or what to even do with him. It'll come to you sooner or later. At least he's safe here until then. Okay, close the door then. Really? I added two to perception and nothing. I don't even have anything that can increase motorix. I, I, I don't. Do I have clothes that can increase motorix? Savoir fair, composure. Interfacing. Yeah, I got nothing. Hmm. All right. Fine. Hide your secrets then. All right, Kim. Kim. Can I convince you about yes. something? Oh, it's seventeen percent. We need more on Inland Empire though. Let's wait until we have our fancy dice for the next day. See if we can actually, you know, do something with it then. I'm surprised we were able to haul that thing down in there. Wait, what about this? Do we have better perception now? You see a set of tire tracks in the brown Visual slush calculus. that covers Gosh, the darn it. Okay. Let's go in. Kim Kitsuragi, I think. It's time for us to, uh, to turn in, my friend. Got anything for me, guards? Can I help you? Nah, we're good. Let's go upstairs, baby. See you in the morning, he says. Wait, can I can I debrief? Yes. Okay. All right, it's fine. Just leave me there, Kim. Do what you will, huh? I'm gonna do this thing real quick. I want to see. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face, adorned with the expression. Oh, that's electrochemistry. I need points in electrochemistry for that. Hangs on the bathroom wall. Roll it. In it. Gosh darn it. Adorned with the expression. The chain cutters slip out of your hands. All right, fine. You know what? That's fine. Let's go ahead and do the sleep. The bed is still cold from the broken window, and not too inviting. But it's yours. You've earned it. Try to rest yet. The window stands broken in Yeah, that's fine. Alright, bedtime. The bed is still cold from Beautiful. The bed is still cold from the wind blowing in from the broken window. The mattress creaks as you close your eyes and try your hardest to fall asleep. Are we 
Are we going to the weird shadow realm again? Here again, my broken bot. Waves are coming, carrying you away. But you can't go. No. You have to stay always half aware of yourself. Limbic system, why are you here? You're not cooperating, brother man. Why? It's your disgusting body. Oh. Even through your sleep, you feel a vague discomfort suffusing it. Your belly and your sides are unpleasantly tender. I don't like you limbic system. You could curl up into a fetal ball of safety. But you cannot because of the pain. Liver? And there's a lot of it ever present in your organs. It's like every one of them has their own nasty song to sing. Every cell in your body is moaning in agony, asking, What did we ever do to you? <sighs> Body's worthless anyways. No one does anything nice to it. And why might that be the case? What lava lights on such a bloated corpse to be? Wait, wasn't this the express to fuck all burrow? Now you've gone off the rail. There we go. Baby. Now you're stuck sitting here by the tracks, admiring the wreck around you. Yeah. You just can't help it. Looking at yourself. The sum total of your accomplishments. You're just stuck here in the half world. Could try looking at other people. Really, really looking. looking. But why would you want to start doing that? Just get me out of here then, back to the other place. Oh, baby boy. You're already in the other oh. place. There's no nourishment for you tonight. Great. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe if you, you know, like, took a lot of drugs before you go to sleep, that'd do the trick. Need a couple more kinds of drugs Maybe if I can. If you weren't so hard on yourself. Oh, empathy. What do you think you're doing right now? Coming to some greater awareness look at all these lights blinking in and out of existence thoughts you're just pretending that you're asleep even to yourself while the world goes on without you limbic system shut up let it let it but it never seems to let you go does it Time to rise and wipe that shining sweat off as best you can. Gather your bearings. Rock, Rock and roll. And roll. Open them. Let's go. Let's go. Ah, everything's healed. That's why I didn't heal up entirely. Wake up. Shake it off. Alright. Can we do this? Can can we can we fix it? A mirror hangs on the bathroom no. wall. That'll be for now. Alright. That's a perfect place to save. How long is this game? I don't know, but it seems like it's gonna be pretty long. I suppose it depends on when we actually solve the whole murder. Um but yeah. That's going to be everything for this tonight, though. Uh, it's two hours on the recording. I think that's nice, solid, good. About 2.30 my time. I'm going to get to bed a little bit earlier tonight than I normally do. So, anyways, this is for YouTube. Thank you, everybody who's watching this video later on. Um, remember to like, favorite, and subscribe. Do all the good stuff. Ring that bell for notifications. Stop by Twitch. We're happy to have it. Uh, <laughs> Take care, everybody, on YouTube. We'll see you next time. We'll post another episode soon but if you want to see it sooner make sure you stop by twitch.tv slash the underscore black belt underscore barber i'm here literally every night so anyways stop by and say hi take care